In this video, we are going to talk about adding an IP security camera like this one to your Blue Iris software. The camera we are going to be messing with today is an Amcrest camera. This can be mounted indoors or outdoors. They're very affordable. I've used them a lot. They come with the mounting kits. This particular camera is power over Ethernet, meaning I can run a single Ethernet cable, like a Cat6 cable, out to it. So if it's outside, I run that single cable and it gets power. I don't need to run a separate power cable to it as long as my network switch has power over ethernet capability. But this video is not about the camera. It's about adding it to Blue Iris. Let's switch over to the picture in picture view. And I'm going to plug this camera in. I do have a network switch here. And once it's booted, we are going to need its IP. So even before we get into Blue Iris, when you add a camera to your network, generally your network's set up for what's called DHCP, meaning your camera is going to get an IP address from your router. You need to know that IP address so that you can put it into Blue Iris. The first thing I suggest doing on the PC that you have Blue Iris is downloading Angry IP Scanner. Very handy tool, open source, we're gonna go for the Windows installer. Looks like Windows Defender wants to block me, but we are okay with Angry IP. Install, and let's run it. So you'll get a window, let's close out a browser here. You'll, you'll get a window that looks like this, that shows the first IP address in your network and the last, and then your particular host name. So I am going to click start and what you'll see is it begins scanning. You're going to see a whole bunch of devices that are on my network right now. I do suggest that you put cameras on a separate VLAN or virtual local area network, but that is for another video. Um, I, my cameras are on a different network, but in this case, for the purposes of this video, we're using our main uh, trusted network, trusted network that everything else is on. So we are going to look for an Amcrest camera and lo and behold, we have a green dot with an Amcrest camera. This looks like the one. Now I know there's only one Amcrest camera on this particular network. So we have 32 hosts alive, 254 scanned. By the way, this tool is so handy when you're working with security cameras, especially if you're putting in multiple you plug them all in, you're like, what the heck, which IP are they on, um, or any device for that matter. So 168, 192.168.4.74. If you were to visit this IP address in your browser, you should be able to log into the camera directly. So you can make adjustments in the camera. You can take watermarks off of it, for example. You can change the resolution. Um, we're, we're not gonna do that in this video. We're just gonna add it to Blue Iris for now. So we, we have the IP address, we'll leave this open. So it's 4.74, the last two octets. Now let's open Blue Iris. So how do you add the camera? Well, we are going to right click. We'll call this butterfly cam. You'll see why in a second. It is going to be a network IP camera. There are other things. In fact, you can use a USB webcam if you wanted to. This camera, I don't, actually, I think it does have audio, but we're not gonna enable audio for this one, but you can if you needed to. We will enable motion detector, and you do wanna enable direct-to-disk recording, no re-encoding. Um, that saves your CPU. You can see our CPU is at zero. This is a pretty powerful computer that I have zero cameras running on and nothing else running on right now. <laughs> but once you get a bunch of cameras, this direct to disk recording is good because it's not going to take the footage in, re-encode it and use those uh, processor cycles. So make sure to click that, I'll click okay. Okay, so now we're brought to this screen. This is where you'd type in the IP address. Now some cameras like Amcrest will automatically broadcast on your network and you can click this find slash inspect button and it'll look for if it's an OnViv camera. So let's do that and see if it'll find it. And it did. It found the Amcrest camera, 4.74, so we can confirm that is the correct camera. So we can click on it, click OK, 
I believe the default, that's the other thing. When you get a camera, you need to know the default username and password. I suggest logging into that camera. I showed you the login page before. Changing that default username and password, at least the password, so that if someone were on your network, um, they were they wouldn't be able to get to to the camera and make changes, hack it, make put alternate firmware, whatever you want to do to be nefarious. Uh, so let's see if the admin admin was the correct password. So we click OK there, click OK here, and let's see if the camera will come up. And yes, it did. It's upside down, but that is a dried butterfly. You can see there's a bunch of extra text and IPC and there's an Amcrest watermark. And so, so that's some of those things you have to log into the camera to take off. Some of those things are from Blue Iris. It is definitely not um, Y2K anymore, thankfully. So if we right click again and get into the camera settings, you have a whole bunch of tabs at the top. You have your general tab, and this is where you're gonna see your streams, your bit rate, your, your frames per second, that's what FPS stands for, how many megapixels this camera is utilizing. Right now, we're not using the substream, but you should. How it works is the camera sends two streams, the mainstream and the substream, to Blue Iris. And for things like previewing cer certain functions of Blue Iris, you'll use the substream because it doesn't need to be high quality. But your mainstream is what will be recorded um, if there's an action, for example. You can tweak all that stuff, but the substream is a lot easier for the PC to process. So you have your video tab. We've already set up the camera. You can see the IP. You can limit the max bit rate and uh, frames per second. Right now we are limited to 50,000. So this is the max that Blue Iris will allow. You'll set the bit rate and the frames per second in the camera though. That That's the place to set it. You also have the option here to display overlays or not. So you can turn this on or off. We can edit the overlays. I usually use the date and time from the camera itself because this can add a little bit of CPU overhead. If you just have a few cameras, it's probably not as important and you, it might be easier to use the date and time in Blue Iris. Um, that way you can restrict the access of the cameras out to the internet, which is, by the way, a good thing to do. We'll talk about that in another video. So subscribe to the channel if you're not and you are interested in that. Like I was saying, I usually will use the overlays, the time inside the cameras um, and the, the amount of time it loses by not having access to the internet to an NTP server, a time server is uh, minimal. Since I don't have audio enabled, this is all grayed out, but you do have options for gain and sensitivity and triggers. We're not gonna get too deep into this today in this video, but you can set up the motion sensor so I can build an area of one portion of what this camera sees. I can also use something called um, AI, artificial intelligence, right here, this button. Um, there's a couple of different things now that Blue Iris offers Personally, I'm using DeepStack AI at home, um, but as you saw in that pop-up earlier, there are some new options that we can explore. Basically what it does is it'll identify if it's a person or a dog or cat or truck or car um, and only send you alerts. So it'll see motion, but then it'll only send you alerts when it identifies it as one of those things. Recording, it's defaulted to record only when triggered. You can also set up for continuous recording or any of these other options. Personally, I do continuous recording um, just because if there's a trigger and or it misses a trigger, I always want to have the footage. So um, up to you, though. You can also set up pre-rolls. Again, this is a whole nother video we can get into um, on just how to set all this stuff up, uh, pre-trigger record time. So you want it, when it does trigger, you have a five second buffer beforehand. So, so there's, there's lots of different things you could do around recording. And it depends on how big your hard drive space is, how long you wanna keep your footage, how many cameras you have. There's a lot of variables that go into that, but this is where you would set up. You do set up the recording um, for each camera individually. There's also a schedule 
we can click on that next. But there's a global schedule as well. Up here in the gear icon, you can set the global schedule for Blue Iris. We'll, we'll talk about that um, another time. But you can set an individual schedule for a camera as well. That, that's the nice thing about Blue Iris is it, it, they give you the granular controls. You can more or less do anything that you're looking to do. If this was a PTZ camera or pan tilt zoom, there are some um, great controls over pan tilt zoom cameras built into Blue Iris. I do have a PTZ. Actually, it's an Amcrest PTZ camera at home that I'm able to control. You can kind of see if I move this window out of the way. Um, I can use these arrows on my PTZ camera and move it around. You can also set up what's called a tour. So if you had a PTZ camera that you wanted to move every five seconds to capture an entire parking lot or yard, you can do that. So lots of, of PTZ controls here. Uh, Watchdog is really if it detects loss of signal um, or other sort of administrative issues with the camera. That's what that's for. Post some JPEGs, and you can do different things with JPEGs. There's there's also lots of different uh, hooks you can have out of Blue Iris and into Blue Iris for smart home, um, for web-based servers, things like that. So you, you, you can turn all that on here. We'll go over to webcast. I think that's the last one. You do have the ability to take a camera and stream it, um, either using Windows Media or uh, RTMP. So let's say you wanted a camera and you wanted a private YouTube stream of that camera all the time. Um, it's, you know, pointed at Huntington Beach, California, and it's a beautiful view and you want to uh, use Blue Iris to do that. So you could actually have that camera set up, put in the URL, put in the stream key of your YouTube, and you can do that through Blue Iris. Uh, that is pretty cool for a security camera software that runs on a PC that has no recurring costs other than <laughs> support and uh, and maintenance if you want it. If you are new to Blue Iris, I do suggest participating in their 15 day free trial. And you can do things like add a camera. And also we do have an affiliate link below to purchase a license. So if you click on that, um, it'll take you right to the page to purchase a license. You will need a license key if you want to use it. Again, you could have up to 64 cameras. We've set up one today. Um, so anyway, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more Blue Iris content, and we'll see you next time. Take care.